we've been talking about this culture of honor and it's up to us to yield to Jesus in us. Jesus always manifests a culture of honor. He doesn't have to work it up. It's a natural thing with him. And he's in us and we're one with him and he's our life. And when he's living his life through us, it's always a culture of honor. And over the past few months since November, even before that, probably the past year, there's been a lot of political issues going on in our country. And it grieves me. Um, it grieves me because the Bible says we're pilgrims and strangers passing through a foreign land. And, and I feel like the church is making this place home. And you have your political agenda, independent, democratic, or republican, and, and Jesus is neither. Yes, he does have values, and both sides have values. But we need to honor one another. And if it doesn't start in the church and filter into social media, into the public places, this nation will be divided. Do you understand? So we must understand that this is not our home. Amen, church? Where's our home? Heaven. And where is heaven right now? On earth in us. Romans 13, 1 through 7. Everyone must submit to governing authorities. For all authority comes from God. And those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. Yes, President Obama was placed there by God. President Bush was placed there by God. And some of you even struggle with this. Hitler was placed there by God. Lean not unto our own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge him, and he will direct us. Verse 2 says, so anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and they will be punished. For the authorities do not strike fear in people who are doing right, but in those who are doing wrong. Would you like to live without fear of the authorities? Do what is right, and they will honor you. The authorities are God's servants sent for your good. But if you are doing wrong, of course you should be afraid. For they have power to punish, punishing those who do what is wrong. So you must submit to them, not only to avoid punishment, but also to keep a clear conscience. Pay your taxes too. For these same reasons, for government workers need to be paid. They are serving God in what they do. Give to everyone you, what you owe them. Pay your taxes and government fees to those who collect them and give respect and honor to those who are in authority. This week, Jacksonville passed HRO. And I know that many people, their spirits are grieved. But we honor them. You don't have to agree with them, but we honor them. And if you make an appeal to the mayor, make your appeal in love and grace and mercy, but you honor him. The scripture says, honor everyone, love your brothers and sisters in faith, fear God, honor the emperor. 
If we don't honor those in authority, we welcome anarchy. God places all leaders in positions of authority because they're servants of God to bring good upon the people. Even Jesus himself acknowledged wicked authority. John 19, 11, Jesus answers speaking to Pilate, you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Even Jesus submitted to the government authorities. Daniel 2.21 says, He controls the course of world events. He removes kings and sets up other kings. God raises up righteous kings and he raises up wicked kings. God is sovereign and he's in control. So we can rest in the fact that God is in control. Acts 13, 22, then God removed Saul who had wickedness in his heart and made David their king. David had an amazing heart. He knew the steps of honor. Here's this wicked king, Saul, who was seeking sorcery. But David knew the steps of honor. He first submitted himself to this flawed king, this insecure leader. That's God's way. Submitting even when the authority is wicked. David did that. But here's man's ways to overthrow the throne full of pride and rebellion. I've seen it happen in the church. I've seen church plants start by not honoring a pastor and they fail because they've not done it in the order of God in honor. David knew his calling even from a child. He knew he was to be king. But David walked in humility. He walked in obedience to King Saul. And David killed his thousands of thousands and was victorious but he still honored King Saul. He submitted to his authority. He honored a dishonorable king. David's friend at one time had the opportunity to kill King Saul while he was sleeping. And David told his friend, don't hurt him. Who could lay a hand on God's anointed? David even honored King Saul's generation after he died. What is our part is to yield to the honor of God, living in humility, obedience with character, always thinking of others before ourselves, in reverence of others, in respect of others, because it's not about me. God's part as we submit and yield to that place of honor in Christ living through us, God's part is to promote us and exalt us like he did King David. But David's motive wasn't to be promoted as king. His motive was out of a pure heart. Titus 3.1 says, remind the people to respect the government and be law-abiding, always ready to lend a helping hand. One of the things that grieves me today is to see people in church publicly criticize authority, any authority. It grieves my spirit. And Ephesians 4.29 says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. God is calling us to minister grace with our words, grace from our heart, 
that we are honorable people, even honorable to our enemies. I'm going to ask Matt to come up. He's going to share just a few words about honor. But before he shares, I want to read this scripture, and I'm going to read it in three different versions. Because today, many people don't like the word of obey. But Hebrews 13, 17 says, Obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say. Their work is to watch over your souls, and they are accountable to God. Give them reason to do this with joy and not with sorrow. That would certainly not be for your benefit. Let me read another version that you might receive a little better. The message. Be responsive to your pastoral leaders. Listen to their counsel. They are alert to the condition of your lives and work under the strict supervision of God. Contribute to the joy of their leadership, not its drudgery. Why would you want to make things harder for them? But I'm going to read you my most favorite paraphrase version. Would you look at it with me on the overhead? Hebrews 13, 17 in the mirror translation. Trust your guides in this grace revelation and yield to their instruction even though it seems different to the law system that you were formerly acquainted with they are genuinely alert to your well-being just as with shepherds guarding their sheep you are their total concern they have taken official accountability for you they represent to you all that grace reveals rather than what the law requires. It is to your advantage to embrace their care with joy. This makes their work a pleasure and not a burden. This is who we are here. I'm not a hireling to try to get you to obey my words. I want us to hear from God as a body and obey His words. Matt, would you come up and share? check hey guys such a sweet atmosphere here just keep this just really quickly um just lord was speaking to me just about um the love that the trinity has for each other and um if, if we remember when um jesus was about to be baptized the father spoke out love over him this is my beloved son in whom i'm well pleased I just think that was so special. And then Jesus, so the Father went out of his way to love on Jesus, to show him honor in that moment when he was in front of man, really for the first time, being commissioned into ministry. And then Jesus, as he lived his ministry, he kept saying, no, 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 no. Whatever you see me do, it's the Father doing. So he gave the glory and the honor and the love back to the Father. And then the beautiful thing is Jesus says, listen, I know you see me, but there's someone better coming. He's going to lead you into all truth, the Holy Spirit. So what we see modeled there is total love and affection for each other. And I think it's such a precious thing because that is supposed to be the heart of the body of Christ, where, where, where we look at each other and we're so concerned for the empowering and loving on the other person that any kind of jealousy becomes foreign to us. And I feel like it's such a special thing that we have in this body. I see people that are um, incredibly gifted, incredibly um, just beautiful in Christ. There's no other way to describe it filled up with the glory of God and yet we come and we serve each other and we root for each other I feel like a lot of us have been we've all been part of different organizations and we've, we've all been part of this kind of organization where that the head person does not have the heart of the father inside of him at least I've been a part of this where I've been in organizations where there's so much condemnation and shame and often it comes from the top I, I, I feel this is true is that whatever the internal atmosphere of the leader of an organization is eventually that organization will take on on the heart of that we see this even in history. I, when we were driving here, Mason and I were talking. Stalin, what was going on in the Kremlin? The atmosphere that Stalin carried of, of dictatorship and control manipulation. You could be 14 time zones away in a little village and the atmosphere had so permeated that village that, that, that a husband and wife would lie to each other just, 
because they could not be honest to each other. We're building up a kingdom that though we're here 14 time zones away, the, the love of Christ will be expressed in villages. Okay, and we, have, and we, we need to carry this, this realization. We can see it in, on the other side, but we're gonna eventually see the fruit of it on our side. And, and what I just, what, what's so beautiful is that uh, Roger and Gloria, their hearts um, are ones of love and honor to build up. I, I, I know pastors who are so scared of the prophetic because they're scared of you hearing something that they may not hear that they would never promote you because their identity is tied up in their ability to hear the Lord's voice above your ability. So it's such a, such a precious thing that in, in our generation, we have a, a, a couple like Roger and Gloria that, that model the love of Christ. And then that there's a pastoral team here that, that also carries that heart. And it's such a special thing. And I feel like each time when I come, when I come to Grace, I could leave every Sunday saying that was the best time ever. I, yeah, and I tell people, like, I go to, I go to Grace. I, I don't think Grace is the best church because I go to it. I go to it because I feel that it is the best. It's the be definitely the best community for me. So it's, it's not like I brag on us because I go there. I don't care about me. That's my, I don't care about my ego. But I go there because I know I will touch the Lord in a new way. And so what we wanted to have is, what I wanted to have, what I was seeing for this time, is just where we have the pastoral team come up and line up here, what I, want, I thought we'd have more time and I wanted to open up the microphone for us to come and literally like esteem them in front of other people. But I, I love an aspect of honor where it's like we just get to brag on each other. Moments of, moments of the Lord, but our time is short. And so, yes, yeah, so I want to get Blake and yes, Jace, come on. Where is, where is Rolando Rafael Rivas? Is Rolando here? Is Roland here? Okay. Tim, you, well, either Tim or Amy. Okay, Tim. Come on down. And then also significant others, Nathan Zink, Lauren Zink. Come on, kiddos. Unless, unless you have family stuff to attend to because you are worthy of so much honor. You are worthy of so much honor. Jane, yes, come on. It, and, and we could name so many people here who week in and week out sacrifice um, so much. I mean, Mark in the back, Jacques. I mean, so many people. The the the, the quacks. I mean, the the, the the cooks. I mean, we we could go on and on. But what I love about this church too is that this pastoral staff takes seriously the idea that that they're equipping you for ministry. It's not about their identity. So what I want us to do is um, just to close our eyes and ask the Lord, who specifically up here we're supposed to go pray for, and also share a heartfelt word about how their ministry, their posturing of faithfulness the past few years has impacted you, that something would be imparted into them, that, that, they, would, that they would see significance where otherwise they did not see significance, that, that, there would be, that there would be a quickening inside of their hearts. So Lord, I thank you for speaking to each person. God, I thank you that, that this, is a, this is not a, a crowd of um, just churchgoers, but it's a crowd of ministers that will impart love and grace, God, to our leaders, God, to people who, who, we, who we submit under. So thank you, Jesus. So we're gonna go back into worship now. And whatever, whatever, whoever the Lord spoke to you, if he hasn't, just keep praying. Ask who, Lord, and what should I say to them? And then, and then the biggest thing with the Lord is always say yes. Always say yes to his spirit. So just come down and be faithful to that. Okay, as we will go back into worship, but this is a time of impartation to, to these men and women who are so faithful to us.